it's, I don't think it's easy to describe a hero because I think there are so many different ideas of what a hero is, probably as many as there are people. But I suppose a hero is someone who, um, it, it, it's a representation of a certain personality that is supposed to inspire us to work, um, to um, act in ways that we might be reluctant to act in otherwise, right? So it's supposed to motivate us to take certain risks that maybe we wouldn't like to take. I am interested in how this image is constructed of a hero, of, of how this personality comes to be constructed at different periods of time. Because it's naive to assume that it's possible to function without heroes, especially in times of crises. And in times of crises, there will always be heroes constructed in a way which will encourage the rest of the people to act um, to act in, in a certain way. And I study war, usually, so for me it's really interesting to um, look at how war heroes are constructed. Um, and here we usually have uh, very masculine men, um, who, um, who's, who's usually a military man, um, and uh, f what is also interesting for me is to see what this person stands for. Because even though they can be real people, um, the, the, these, these personalities, these heroes represent real historical figures. What we actually know about them is very little. We don't know much about their lives. We just see the representation, the image, heroic image that is being um, portrayed for us. Uh, so for me, what's interesting as a historian to, to think what do they stand for? And for us to understand, if we are celebrating these heroes, what does it mean for us as society? So if we're celebrating war heroes, what are we actually celebrating? Does it mean we're glorifying violence? Does it mean we're supporting political violence um, as, a, as a solution to conflicts, etc.? My um, ongoing project, my main project, is looking at women who took part in the Second World War in different uh, military structures, in the Red Army, in the Ukrainian Insurgent Army, and Polish uh, Home Army, um, and, and to see what their experiences were of war and also representation of these women. But I also look at the participation of women in the current conflict in the Donbas region in Ukraine, and the participation, specifically participation of women in the Ukrainian Army. Um, and here, the construction of a hero is extremely important in both cases. In both cases, we tend to see heroes as, as men, as military men, but women are somewhere, are somewhere else. That's not to say they are not completely uh, present in the heroic narrative. They are present, but, but what I'm going to talk about in my presentation is that they are sort of portrayed as unsung heroes. Yeah? As opposed to acknowledged, celebrated heroes, they are unsung heroes. And um, something I'm interested in is to, is to see, again, what it means for society to relegate the women to the category of um, maybe acknowledged, maybe recognized for their input, but still not perceived on the same, in the same way as the male heroes are perceived. I think there's definitely a certain shift in the, in the way women perceive their participation as such. They know that there is an opportunity, they seek these opportunities, especially in the Ukrainian case, over 6,000 people have already, 6,000 women have already taken part in, in, the, in the conflict in Donbass as part of the Ukrainian armed forces, whether as volunteers or actually um, contracted uh, within the military. Um, so, so yes, there's, um, there's certainly enough women who are willing to take part whether there's a significant change in us as a society in the way we perceive them, I am not so sure. Uh, I am not sure. And another thing that I'm not sure about is whether uh, elevating them to the same level as the men is going to do any good for the understanding of hero as a masculine man. Um, for the reasons that simply adding women to the male pantheon of heroes isn't going to tell us much about the reality of experiences of these women at the front line. Um, I think what is necessary is to study what the experiences are um, and, and also to, to perhaps study what the experiences of men are and um, you know, whether, whether, whether we idealize the, the military man too much even in times of war. Well, especially in times of war, especially in times of war. I think that's how we, what we associate the word hero with, yes. 
but but that's also um, a kind of um, widespread media perception, uh, perception perhaps in, in some types of literature, um, films, yes. Um, I don't think that's necessary, and even the, that's the image that the state promotes, especially in times of crises. It's certainly the image the state promotes in Ukraine at the moment, um, for the purposes of mobilization, for the purposes of encouragement, uh, you know, to encourage these men to, you know, to... Um, to take risks, to go to the army, to serve, etc. Um, so there's a very clear function. But I think we shouldn't underestimate the, the, the private consumption of the idea of a hero. I think a parent who moves to another country, for instance, from a war zone or, or not, um, an immigrant who comes, rebuilds their lives, um, to helps their children to study, um, can be perceived just as much of a hero to that family and to the future generations of that family as a state-endorsed hero, and maybe even more so, or a rescuer who rescues people in times of um, uh, difficulties, right? persecuted people, can also be then held as a hero for generations and generations of that family. Um, there's a lot of emphasis in literature, in cinema, uh, on the heroic death. Um, and that's again connected to uh, the narrative, to, to the discourse of war. Uh, but I think heroic survival is is uh, equally important, and I think it is discussed. It's just not discussed in the same way.